Hello friends, in this lecture what I am going to do is basically give everybody a fill of properties of surfaces. Now the properties of surfaces are basically the properties of a body and is influenced by the shape of the body. And this properties of the surfaces will have some kind of a influence on how the body will take in bending, on how the body will take in torsion, on how the body will take in maybe some kind of an axial load and all those things. Right. So the properties of surfaces are a must. The study of this is a must. Right. So essentially now in the first lecture what I'm going to do is basically give everybody the concept of centroid or the center of gravity and the first moment of area. And what are these basically? Let us see. For example, I have this pen. Suppose this is my pen. And this body or this pen is composed of infinite number of elemental particles. Right. Suppose this is one particle, this is one particle, this is one particle, this is one particle. And each have their own weights. Right. And these weights are assumed to act through the center of gravity of these elemental particles. Right. Now if I say that I will, equ I will equate all these weights. Right. To a big weight W. That is the summation of all these weights. And this W is assumed to act at a point called the C, which is the center of gravity. Then, if this is W and if it acts along C, then this W, if it has the same effect as do all this weight acting through their center of gravity has, then the C point is essentially called the center of gravity. And if we, if we give some kind of a reactional force R, it will balance this W. Right. If R and W are of equal magnitude and it will not create any couple as the line of action of these two forces are same and essentially this body or this pen will be in equilibrium. So let us take this concept forward now. Suppose I have some kind of a rigid frame of reference. Right. For example, this is my frame of reference. This is suppose X, this is Y. And this is suppose a body I have. Right. Now, in this body, if I assume some kind of an elemental particle, suppose this is my elemental particle and this is of an area dA, right? And if I say that the distance of this elemental particle with respect to x-axis is yi and the distance with respect to y-axis is xi, then if I want to find out the moment this elemental particle will have about the x-axis, and essentially it is dmx and this dmx is nothing but is equal to yi into dA right and dmy is the moment of this elemental particle about this y axis so this is equal to xi into dA and if we integrate this we will essentially get the moment of this whole body about the x axis so mx is integration of dmx which is essentially equal to y dA and my is integration of dmy which is equal to nothing but x dA right and this integration basically gives us the moment that this sub that or, or I should say it like this that there are infinite number of elemental particles and each have their moments about the x-axis and the summation of all these moments about the x-axis is mx and the summation of all this moment about y-axis is m1. Now, what is the concept of center of gravity or the centroid? The center of gravity or the centroid is that point in which the whole area will be assumed to act. Right. Or the whole weight of the body assumed to, is assumed to act to that point. So essentially, if C is my center of gravity and it is at a distance of xc, suppose yc from x-axis, and xc from y-axis then essentially mx can also be equal to uh, equal to a into yc and this my is equal to a into xc so essentially xc is nothing but is equal to x dA by a and yc is equal to nothing but yda by a. So essentially this xc, yc 
are the coordinates of the center of gravity of the centroid with respect to this frame of reference and this is how we can calculate the position of centroid right now the second thing that we must understand is what do you mean by moment of area the first moment of area the first moment of area first number one moment of area well this is a term and if I if I cut this term into two halves number one I have first moment and number two you have area so essentially this area is nothing but is equal to a and this first moment is nothing but the total area acting through that center of gravity so the first moment essentially gives us the distance of this point or the center centroid to with reference to the x-axis or y-axis so essentially we get mx and my as the first moment of area so this is all for this lecture and uh, oh okay I, I, I got to say one more thing that is you can have you can find out the center of gravity or the centroid of different cross sections right and I'm not going to do that those derivations because those are too easy so essentially this is the whole concept and the derivations can be seen from the book for example if you have some kind of uh, of a suppose a semicircle and this is my x-axis then the center with respect to x-axis is at a distance of 4r by 3 pi because this is a very unsymmetrical kind of a thing but with respect to y-axis I have the center at a distance of suppose d by 2 so it's the essentially it's d by 2 4r by 3 pi is the coordinate of this or r and 4r by 3 pi is the coordinate of the center of gravity of the semicircle so this is how we can calculate the center of gravity and I hope that you have enjoyed the lecture and the next lecture I will deal about moment of area or this, I should say the second moment of area and moment of inertia and those concepts we have already seen in bending but what do you mean by I and what do you mean by I will we'll basically look at it in the next lecture thanks a lot for listening thank you